Okay, next step. Uh, we've got to drill uh, four holes. One, two, three, four holes in this bracket. And uh, we're looking at uh, a little bit of a step down to get to them. But that's not too bad. And looks like they're half inch holes. I think it's a no brainer. Let's do something easy. Next part of this little scenario is uh, I looked and looked for button head bolts, 7 16 and I couldn't find them. Not in 3 16 stainless. But I did find some bolts, uh, you know, regular. Uh, hex head bolts so I'm coming in here and I don't know if you can see it real well and I'm just going to radius off the top of these bolts and it doesn't take too long and it actually is going to be more secure because the the hex head somebody could actually put a allen wrench in there and unscrew it why I wouldn't know, but uh, you know, certainly could be done. We're gonna put a little bit of oil in there. Oh, hang on here, we got caught up. Back up here. Okay. Continuing. Continuing. Okay. Continuing. I just trim this thing down until it has a kind of a nice radius to it. And whenever I go to use the uh, tooling uh, shop, and there's one here in town, I always look at his, uh, his uh, tool bits, and I find some that, uh, that already have a a ground. I mean, you know, that would take an hour or so to grind that shape. But that one already had it, and it, I think it was five bucks or something like that. So I I buy up all those little shapes, and uh, sometimes I adopt them, and sometimes I just use them like they are, just like this is. So uh, we take the nut out or the bolt out. And uh, a little hot <laughs> come over here and we've got three or four of them already machined up they look pretty good struggle and struggle and struggle to find a way to uh, polish this uh, really rough surface this is hot roll and I don't know why I got hot roll I mean I didn't order it but uh, I didn't know to order cold roll either so next time I'll know that but uh, we've, we've struggled, we've been, gone through piles of paper discs and that sort of thing until I finally kind of thought, well, hey, maybe I could just use the fly cutter. You know, it is a long piece, and the fly cutter doesn't exactly work, but it works enough that gives us a nice finish. And with just a couple of glitches wherever I have to index it. And... Uh, so, uh, hey, fly cutter it is. Unfortunately, we're almost done. So, uh, we'll at least have this for a future, uh, future situation. I got about another, oh, foot and a half to do on this side. Then I got the other side to do, and we're ready to go. Now, I know the fly cutter quits working when that starts happening. So then I just turn it off. Raise it up a little bit and re index everything. Okay, now, here is I cut the trim around the glass, and that's in, you know, 316 stainless. And uh, we had to have that specifically bent. And then uh, I had to find a uh, piece of beading that would work with that. Found that, no problem. And so now we're going to go over to the to the cutter and cut this uh, 45 degree angle for the next piece of glass. This one's done. We're going to do this for the next piece of glass, and um, we'll go over there. Okay, the metal cutting chop saw, 
we've set it up at a 45 degree angle and you know this is pretty rough cutting so uh, what we're going to do is cut basically cut this a little bit long take the the um, the little railing over to the mill and go ahead and do the finish cut on the mill and get it exact okay here we are We've got uh, about six days left before this thing is due, and uh, we brought uh, uh, Harold in. <laughs> Keep forgetting his name. We brought Harold in to uh, to uh, help weld, and uh, you, and actually uh, we have to get this thing done five days before the due date because uh, there's a bit of a rush with the corporation, of course. Um, so we've got the basic layout here, uh, and everything's mostly polished, although I just dropped this thing uh, on the ground and it scratched the heck out of it, so we've got to be very careful. So uh, anyhow, the basic layout uh, is right here, although uh, I think this goes down just a little bit more. And, uh, and the box, uh, the camera is actually sitting on the box as we speak, so uh, uh, it's um, being polished in the middle of, and uh, at some point or another it will sit right in this area here, and, and so this is the area for the monitor. So, it, you know, we're kind of moving along and it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, it, there's a bit of a rush and, you know, I'll kind of pedal to the metal, which I don't like doing. I like to kind of, you know, move along very, uh, systematically but um, you know it's good and um, hey we're moving forward Here's Patty once again Hello. cranking away at the grinder looking for her safety goggles because everything gets lost around here there's a black hole in this studio Safety first, exactly. <laughs> and I don't think we've ever seen what Aunt Patty actually looks like, <laughs> except this mask thing. Well, the other night I went up and I thought, well, you know, I'll just cut these little rails here. Uh, these are the rails for the glass and the little rubber gasket goes in here and um, and so I thought well I'll just cut them I was a little tired but I thought you know no problem well I cut them too short and then Harold uh, said hey go ahead and just silver solder it and then I you know here I am a jeweler and so I came in and silver soldered it and it works beautifully so I got one more little place to silver solder right there and maybe if I can find a little thing to hold it up on there, we can uh, I can show you how to silver how I silver solder. Well, actually, you know what? I think I could probably just do it. And because silver is so much more forgiving than gold, uh, you can actually have a fairly good sized gap, and the silver will fill it in. Whereas gold, there's no way. I think it just ain't gonna happen. So we'll just heat this up. And I got a little uh, a little bar of uh, silver or a little piece of silver wire, um, silver solder wire, and you can see as we come up to temperature, there it goes. Now if we can get it to fill in the other side, there we go. All right. Now we got a fairly good start going, but it looks like it's not filling in, so I'm going to have to set the camera down. Yeah, well, you know, you want it to look nice, and so we put those little bolts up there, so that it would look good. Okay. So the, we got the sign pan in, we've got the feet welded on, we've got the, all the support stuff, for the bars welded in, and, and, um, and Howard here is putting the nuts in right now. Pearl. They're going to go in the other way, right? Pearl. 
And I machined these little nuts down with the little bolts down. They kind of came out good. Oh, Howard. Howard? Harold. Harold. It's, it's Harold. Harold. I keep saying Howard. I don't know why. Howard Hughes. You kind of remind me of him. Oh, yeah, I wish. <laughs> So everything's moving along fairly smoothly, um, considering we only have five days left to finish this thing. But I'm, you know, I'm I'm feeling better about it. We have Patty, Patty the Savior, Patty the Queen of the Grinders, the the ultimate babe on grinderdom, and just this woman has this cranked on this stuff for days and days and days and it's never going to end. Corporate madness, it really is that. It really is that because there's so much money that it, you know, the, the stars go off in front of your eyes. And it looks like uh, it looks like everything. Oh, everything's gonna go just right. Well, everything doesn't go just right because you're working with somebody else's plans. And and in this situation, the plans of these people are, you know, whoever designed this had I don't know what they were thinking, but. You know, it's okay. It's going to work out just fine. It's just that there's so many places where where it could have been a, a little bit easier, a little bit less material, and done exactly the same thing. But I'm not not complaining. I'm not complaining. This has been a, a quite a project and a, a real eye-opener. Do I want to work for corporations anymore? Mm, I'm not sure. But for the moment, we built the frame for the glass. And it's pretty strong, even though it still flexes a little bit. And, you know, we beef this thing up like a champ. They wanted to use this really thin material. Let me go get some and I'll show it to you. You know, that's the thing, is... Uh, in some places they really beef the heck out of this thing and in other places they totally miss the mark as far as structural engineering is concerned. And, you know, and I won't point those out, but you know, it, it bothers me because it's so obvious. But you know, maybe when you're sitting there with a computer and you're going, oh, hey, maybe this will work. You know, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, we're building this stuff. Let me go to get the other pieces here. We decided to build this stuff out of some beefy material because this is going to carry, and if you can see the end of it, because this is going to carry the glass. And the glass is like the key here um, because that's, what you, that's what's going to protect what's behind it and it's, the doors are going to open and close. And here's what they wanted me to build it out of was this little thin, tweaky, material that just like this isn't gonna work so I you know I called the the contractor and I says it's just not gonna work and so we ordered some more material and uh, and um, we're now building it out of this heavier stock which is which was this material except this one is a little bit wider you can kind of see underneath it so at some point or another and also the same thing for the hinges You got this pretty beefy, pretty beefy uh, built or structure with the box, with the with the frame and the glass. You know, and the frame probably weighs oh 40 pounds. The glass is going to weigh about 75 pounds. So you know, we're right up in the 100 pound bracket, and they want me to put this hinge in. And I'm like, maybe this hinge is going to work. I mean, it might work for, you know, an hour or two, which, you know, might be just about as long as it takes to get paid. But it, I just can't do it, not, not with any kind of 
integrity at all. So I've ordered a bigger hinge, and I'm going to have it overnighted because we're running out of time here. But I just can't, I just can't do it. Um, so I've ordered a bigger hinge, and uh, and it's on its way. Hopefully it'll be here by Saturday, which is tomorrow. <laughs> uh, if not Monday, and, and you know, I think we can still swing with it. We, you know, we've got Monday and Tuesday, and then we got to put it on a truck on Wednesday and take it to uh, Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh, PA, Pittsburgh, California, which is uh, just east of uh, San Francisco area, and install it. And uh, so uh, we're moving forward. We've got uh, this part pretty well pretty well buttoned up except for the hinges of course and putting the locks in because I haven't got the locks yet um, and well things are moving along just fine the thing is is you know I, I thought I could grab the camera every every uh, you know a few minutes and take a shot of uh, of the next thing that's uh, that's happening during this project but we're moving so fast I don't even remember to grab the camera so um, it's now almost four o'clock in the morning this is the only time I actually got time to come back and look at what we've done and I'm I'm kind of proud of what we've done it, it looks good I like it and at the same time this is the only time that I can kind of bring you up to speed as to where we're going with it so we were we had put these these are the rotator that the large box the large monitor box is going to sit on and it's going to be able to rotate back and forth. Uh, actually, just rotate once or twice until they decide where it's going, and then they're going to drill a hole through this, and um, and then it's going to permanently sit there for the you know the rest of the millennium, or you know the next four or five years until something new comes along. And at one point, uh, we welded the rest of the. Um, the structure up and and notice that the whole these these rotators you know basically rotated in and these things need to be lined up and it was uh was a little scary at first because you know this is a lot of metal and uh and uh, how you're going to get it to rotate back and we figured it out you know we basically came in here and you can kind of see the the um the grind marks we came in here and we put here smart we put a just a piece of steel just welded it straight to the thing and then put a come along on it and 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 pulled the two things together and it just kind of rotated it in and it it did the trick and then we and then we welded the backside of the uh, of these uh, uh, supports right here, and it pulled and it pulled it right in, so no problem. So that was uh, that was a little scary at first. Uh, and by the way, yesterday we tried to lift this thing up into the air; it just weighs a ton. So uh, follow with me. I'll be waking up at four o'clock every morning, and uh, and we'll be uh, showing you the. Uh, the next, uh, you know, half a dozen stages because it's taken that long to get there. And that's the foot right there. We got those welded in. Uh, here, maybe we can uh, show you the welds came out pretty good. Nice and tight. Nice and solid. Not going to go anywhere. Also, Patty's been working her little patootie off. I'm telling you. She's been grinding this this uh, box, this monitor box, for uh, I don't know uh, two days now, and uh, she's getting getting real close, and it's it was just a mess, you know. Uh, I ordered uh, cold roll, and they sent me hot roll, and hot roll is like uh, you know a bunch of pock marks. You literally have to take the first eighth of an inch off the surface in order to get down to the to the metal itself and she's really really stepped up to the plate and done that you know of course it still looks pretty rough but uh, it's you know if you can see down below all the scratches and marks and everything it's just starting to get to the point to where it's where it's polishable and uh, I, I think 
you can look at this surface here and she's got it pretty well polished up so at some point uh, probably tomorrow uh, she's going to be again she's going to continue to work on this thing all day today I'm sure of it and uh, probably at some point tomorrow we're going to bring it up and uh, notice that uh, in the welding process although this this line looks pretty good right here but uh, there's a couple of lines where you can see where it uh, kind of curves in just slightly and um, so we're going to have to come in well there's one that I think it curves out slightly so we're gonna have to come in and we're gonna have to pull the metal in a little bit and get things to straighten up because you know the the glass is gonna go on the inside here and we've got to work with the shape of the glass so we're gonna have to kind of push this thing around until it fits the frame so that the glass can go in there and then there's a few monitor brackets that go in here and uh, then we put the monitor in I'll tell you coming up this time of the day up into the shop when it's nice and quiet kind of reminds me of the uh, quote old days when uh, you know when I when I had this shop to myself now I've got uh, two people working for me and uh, and you know things are just popping all day long there's all kinds of noise and movement and sh shifting things and grabbing tools and and it just uh, feels so calm in here and I, and I just look forward to getting my shop back after this project's over with and cleaning it all up and making it look good again and, and beginning on some kind of project that's that's uh, a little more a little less frantic and uh, a little more interesting I mean not that this project isn't interesting there's all kinds of movements and and all kinds of shifts and changes that that make it interesting but it, you know, it is basically somebody else's project, and uh, we're doing it for the cash. So, life is good. All right, so we got Harold on the welder, setting this thing up. And I got your name right this time. Yeah. <laughs> I had to lock it into my brain. It took a major effort. You're not the only one that's ever called me. <laughs> oh really <laughs> so anyhow he's working on this uh, we've got uh, we're, we're getting uh, moving straight along here uh, we got Harold over there welding away trying to get the line straight and it looks like we uh, just finally answered the problem look down that line that thing this thing right here from here to the other side used to have a bow in it like a bow and arrow now it's pretty straight Harold is uh, running passes on the inside in order to uh, in order to pull it back in and it seems to be working after about an hour and a half of us dinking around trying to figure out how to get this thing pulled in uh, just a simple weld pulled it in Turns out the dream job or the dream gig that, uh, you know, I always thought would be like kind of a stepping stone into into the, <laughs> the larger world uh, of doing projects for corporations or doing bigger projects turns out to be a nightmare. It's, you know, it's, it's a workable nightmare. We're, we're working through it. We uh, spent pretty much all day yesterday, very all day yesterday afternoon, putting the glass in uh, in the monitor case, and uh, and then came over to the glass for the uh, for the sign, and we got the same problem. The engineer created such tight tolerances that there's no wiggle room, and so you know, and I. I went through and followed all of the drawings and all of the and all of the uh, um, 
measurements and then went to install the glass and of course the frame is too small by about a quarter. So we've had to cut the corners and expand the frame which means that we don't have as much room <laughs> to open the door and close the door. Each one of these pieces of glass is going to have a hinge on it and then the door opens uh, so they can put something in and the door closes back up again. Not impossible, not impossible to deal with, uh, with the tight tolerances, but, uh, you know, uh, it, had I known that they were going to be tight tolerances, I would have been a lot more flexible with my lines. Anyhow, enough complaining. <laughs> the other part of it is, is that, uh, is that uh, this project was due on the 12th of June, uh, up until about a week ago, and then all of a sudden they want it on the 5th of June. So uh, here we are uh, on the 5th of June. Well, we're not on the 5th of June yet, but we've got three days left. I think we can still make it. Uh, you know, I, I, it just keeps rolling around in my head. Can we make it? Can we make it? Um, there's, there's still a lot to do, but there's also a lot done. Anyhow. Here's the glass. We're having fun. Well, no, I'm not having fun anymore. And you know the hard part was? <laughs> I missed spring. I was so involved in this thing for the last month that I missed spring. I missed going outside and sitting in, and sitting in the garden and digging in the garden. You know, my wife's planted all the vegetables and things, and here I am still working with this steel. I, you know, I love steel, don't get me wrong. Obviously, this is a complaining morning. <laughs> so, uh, we're still at it. It's now uh, 1.30 in the morning. Uh, I finished up yesterday. I was so exhausted, I fell asleep about 6 o'clock. And then, of course, now I am at 1.30. I'm wide awake. And uh, and not sure what to do. Let's see, is there anything else? <laughs> It's been quite a project. I'm exhausted. That's probably the biggest piece. I'm exhausted. I'm not used to working under the gun. And boy, this one is under the gun. Tell me about it. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a process. I won't do it again. I mean, I won't do the under the gun piece again. I, I mean, I still love doing steel, and I, you know, and I love building things. Ah, it's just amazing. But this project needed, oh, four or five months, and they gave me 45 days. And, uh, you know, just, just not enough time. Not enough time. I mean, you know, I'm doing it, but, uh, you know, I give up my entire life to do it. Not a good thing. Not healthy. So yesterday we got the box, uh, the monitor box, pretty well buttoned up. We got the glass in, and it fits the frame. And uh, we still got to, we still have to put the hinges in and the locks in and we get all of that functioning, and then we can put the box onto the, uh, onto the main frame here. And basically, I don't know if you can see it from over there, but the box will rotate on these uh, hinges. I'm going to see if you can see that, because it's an important piece. Basically, the box is going to rotate on uh, these little sleeves here. Now, you know, as I said earlier, it only rotates one time. And then once they find the exact angle they want the, the monitor to be facing, then they're going to drill a hole in it and, uh, and run a bolt through it, and that'll be it. It'll be a done deal. So it's, uh, you know, 
it's the process of uh, setting up this whole thing. Um, let's bring it back. And you can see the monitor where the where the puff came off of that. It goes into the monitor right there. And then that rotates. Of course it doesn't rotate on the monitor, but the whole monitor rotates and uh, it gets to the position they want it to get to. Alright, so uh, we got the glass in. We got everything all set up here. Well, not totally set up. I still have to put the screws in and get the glass mounted and, and we put the hinges in and the locks. And then we started on the glass on the, um, on the sign. And I think it's going to work out just fine. Uh, the glass is a little bit big for the frame. We got to cut the frames and re-weld them up. Uh, just a slightly bit larger, like <laughs> an eighth of an inch. So it's, you know, not too much of a big deal. It's going to take some time. And, um, and Patty's been grinding away on this metal, making it look nice. And uh, here we go. We're off and rolling again. It's one o'clock in the morning. I uh, got to the end of the day, and uh, yesterday, about five o'clock, I ate a little bit of salad and crashed out into a into a chair. And uh, my wife woke me up about uh, I don't know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and we went to bed, and that was it. So now I'm wide awake at one o'clock in the morning. Hey, this is who I am, how I do it. <laughs>